Ladies, gentlemen, both and neither, hello and welcome back to How Much of This Video Can We Play Before Someone Uses a Slur? For tonight's episode, our first contestant. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to Brogast. And alright, that's our show. That's all we got. Thanks and good night, everybody. How much do you care about someone else's comfort? You, like as a person. Is there a line you're not willing to cross if it's not inconvenient to you? Should you value someone else's needs higher than your own? If not, can you justify it? These might seem like stupid, meaningless questions, but they're important, stupid, meaningless questions. A woman blew up for being racist online. Before we get into the details of the story, I'm going to start super basic, just to be super clear and make sure that we are on the same page. If I had a nickel for every time I've had to say some variation of the sentence, oh, the internet was built to be toxic, then I would need to do Patreon advertisements because I say it a lot, because it is. And if you want to fight me on this and debate it out, um, I have some bad news for you. To a lot of people, winning an argument isn't like a want so much as it is a need. Why is there so much fighting online? It's because people defend their beliefs in order to justify it to themselves. And that's normal. It just, you know, isn't productive. And to kind of a disturbing amount of those people, winning an argument can be as simple as provoking the other party into an emotional response. There's just some people with calculators for hearts who think if you can get your opponent to show any kind of feeling, you've won. And we're gonna take that and just reduce it down into, you want cheap attention, you attack somebody online. And if you want to build a career off of that attention, you cater to those people who already think that way and then build off of them. And now holding all of that in mind, let's approach the story, break it apart. Maybe we can find something valuable in there to learn. You know, maybe we won't. Don't say that part. Oh, and because this woman did all of this for publicity and attention, I don't want to contribute to that, so we're going to blur her handle, never say her name. I will refer to her only as... Let's just call her Concrete. On TikTok, this Concrete made a video where she very casually drops the N-word just while recounting a story. Very unnecessary, just happens. And this was after a lot of videos where she's very clearly targeting different groups in order to bait some engagement. Very clearly, she was looking to cause a controversy. And boy, this one did it. Yeah, there was a big negative reaction to this, understandably. To the point where people looked her up, found her job, and sent the video to her employer. The company put out a statement, and the woman was fired. Which is usually how this story plays out. But then the story takes a unique turn, and the woman reveals that she had planned this down to her being fired, and that she masterminded the whole thing, and everyone was a fool for playing into her trap. You know, it, she makes it sound like a villain monologue. And that alone is worth an entire conversation. There's a lot there that's worth looking at. But then this story keeps going, and we can just add more mess into it. Thing is, if you grift one side into making you a career and then you're calling them stupid, the side that helped you is going to be like, what did she say? The base that she was catering to, or at least tried to cater to, just was treating her like the enemy, even though she was using a slur that didn't change the fact that she was a woman who made fun of Republicans, and that's where they draw the line. She was called a blatant shill. People made posts about her appearance, her jawline, making assumptions about her gender. She would go on podcasts and continue to do the whole appearance part of the grift, but people were shutting her down fast. So now she's stuck in this limbo of popularity where she's well known enough to where people are making up rumors about her past, 
but she's not well known enough to continue to coast on this and make a career out of it. And in a way, Concrete did get what she was after, attention. It's just that she failed to successfully pull off the last part of the grift. Don't feel bad for her, she's a racist. Now that is a sequence of events with so much to get into. My brain almost doesn't know where to start with it. But again, I would prefer us be on the same page. So I know exactly where we're going to start. If there's any word that enough people say makes them feel uncomfortable, don't say it. It's that easy. And this is a question worth trying to answer. Why did people report her to her job for that word? How did she know this part of the plan was going to go so reliably? No matter what your personal politics are, they're likely shaped around your beliefs and can serve as an accurate reflection of who you are. So that's your identity. It's who you are. And when that's being attacked, even vaguely, you're going to respond emotionally. Unpleasant white people, or in the business, sour creams, love to make slur usage about the freedom of speech, right? They can only say one word that gets other people mad, and suddenly, you can't police what I say. You can't cite my own history at me. I'm an American. This is not only a a general misreading of the freedom of speech, which is not about your social status, but also B, generally just kind of a dick move to do. The movie Emergency, underrated, really good, highly recommend, does a good job in reframing the N-word discourse with one character stating simply that it's one word that they ask people not say, and for them to actively go against that one request it's just a blatant sign of disrespect. It's only my perspective, but to me, this is not as simple of an issue as just, you shouldn't say it. Make that an edit. You shouldn't say it. Take it out of context. It could be about anything. But we know. Oh, and hey, I'm not the authority on this. I am not setting the rules that I expect everyone to abide by. That's not my place at all. My role in this conversation is just a guy on the internet filming himself, sharing his opinions to a screen that other people will either agree with or not. And your perspective on this might not match mine one-to-one, -one, and that's okay because your view on things could be more nuanced, or it could be similar to mine but just with little tweaks or even as far as contrasting. Viewing this even just as an exchange of communication, this is about whether or not you value someone else's comfortability to your own. It's about the value of other people's feelings. It is about empathy. Oh, but it's just a word. Nope, you picked one of the only words where that doesn't apply. There's an entire history attached to that one word, and you picked that one. The main reason I think this topic is important for us to spend time on in the first place is not because of Concrete calling this plan predictable. You don't need a degree to predict that sequence of events. When I was doing the research part of this, I found a video that said her employer, the one everyone was sending all of those reports to, was a black woman herself. And either way, if this was an intentional part of the plan or not, this part stays the same. We know for a fact this part happened. Concrete's just running around using a slur, one that she says she knew was going to be reported, knowing that her boss would see this. And again, we are limited to speculation because we don't have all of the facts. But just in case, I'm not going to offer even a shred of remorse or sympathy for concrete. I feel like I should apologize to actual concrete. If it was her plan to be reported and fired from using this word, then she was saying it to her employer. Her boss would have had to be a part of the plan. And it takes a real piece of shit to plan to use someone's identity against them like that. So no, she's not some kind of outrage culture mastermind. 
She's just another racist coward who wanted to use this slur from the safety from behind her phone screen. I don't understand why more people don't grasp this, but there's no compromise in bigotry. If you are part of a group that believes you are superior than others, I can guarantee you there's members of that group who think they are more superior than you. Bigotry and conservatism in general is based on a hierarchy, and nobody's sharing first place. You really don't have to be a history teacher to pick up on the fact that this has all been in favor of the rich, white, old, religious men. And if you don't tick all of those boxes, even if you're just one off, they plan on cutting you out. That ideology has an end game, which is worrying for an ideology. And it is reserved for only the people who check all the boxes and everyone else is just a temporary ally. And it does not matter what they're going off about today or tomorrow or in a month. Their goal, the people in charge, their goal is an exclusive club. Easy example, gay Republicans. If they agree with most of the talking points and they align themselves with the other bigots, they'll work together, despite that once they're done focusing on that issue, their own demographic is the next target in line. The key to the grift is knowing this and securing a safe exit. People like Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, Blair White, and Tim Pool. They all appeal to the right, despite being targets of it. But they're making enough money and keeping enough positive notoriety to keep enough distance between them. And Concrete just initiated her grift without prepping any of that. Her master plan just didn't offer any protections for that. And the people attacked her for it. Hi, I'm refilming the ending because I lost the footage because my camera fried because it's summer, and for that we all must suffer. I cannot emphasize enough the degree in which we see variations of this story happen over and over. The, oh, I said something and the woke attacked me for it, you know? Someone you've never heard of says something shitty and then complains themselves into being a micro-celebrity. And seeing this happen over and over and over seems to imply that these people are everywhere. Especially on Elon's Twitter, it amplifies and even rewards people for acting this way. And if you're trying to exist in a world that you think is overrun by loud, angry, opinionated bigots, it sounds tough. It can be kind of hard to exist with that belief just daily. So I'm here to tell you that Something worth remembering is that when it comes to reactionaries, they depend on reactions, which are temporary. Yes, we have seen this grift happen over and over and over again, but I don't think I could name you more than five or ten examples of this, even though there's been way more. Because that kind of furnace just runs out of steam, right? They're angry and hot-headed, and that blows over kind of quickly. And it's because they are all too similar. They are played beat for beat. You hear the same talking points every time. So much so that we always hear about it. The crowds of people that these drum up, they lack the critical thinking to know that they're being grifted. And the people pulling off the grifts lack the critical awareness to understand that what they're doing will not last. And they are now working for people who will turn on them. The only way this grift does real damage is if we let it get to our heads. If we let it sink in, this idea that every third person out there is just, you know, one minor setback away from, I don't know, saying a slur. I promise you that outside, in the right places, you are accepted, no matter who you are. Whatever you identify as, whatever background you come from, a lot of people will, you know, not pay it any mind or, you know, at the very least, not call you anything. And so even though social media will force these stories down our throats every time, please just remember that life isn't really like that.
And what we saw here with concrete is an example of that crowd of people kind of wisening up to the idea that, wait, we're being fed the same thing time and time again, and we keep making people famous. Why are we doing that? Which I'm hoping is just a few steps away from shared experience and compassion and eventually self-growth and accepting people and just, you know, spending your life worrying about something real. And these people scamming others with these stories are eventually going to run out of an audience to profit from. And then they'll move on to something else because these people are going to grift anything. So when this happens again, and it will happen every so often, we break it apart, we talk about it, we understand it, and then we leave it alone. Because we don't have to do anything else. These grifts are on short timers. If you can, sometimes it's best to even just let it fly by, ignore the story. But if you're like me and you need to understand why this happens, then, you know, I think it's reasonable to dig into something without making it real. Scams like the one concrete pull here burn bright, but they burn quickly. And they're going to fizzle out on their own. And as long as we're making people with controversial opinions famous, I'm going to cut in here and say that I like winter more than summer. You know, the vacations just aren't worth it. It's sweaty, my electronics fry. That's my opinion, okay? Wokists, don't cancel me. And if you do want to argue with me about this, leave 10 comments and hit the like button so I know that you disagree. I said wokists? That can't be, that can't be what they're called. <laughs> Sounds like I'm calling them bugs. <laughs>